Glory to God in the highest and greetings to you, my steadfast family in Christ, wherever you are in the kingdom today. Thanks for joining me and for your continued support. Let's take a look at Matthew 4, where we're going to see exactly the process on the way into purpose from being tested, how to endure testing, and to the reward, the comfort that will immediately attend to you once you've endured the testing wilderness period. Matthew chapter 4, then Jesus was led by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. After fasting 40 days and 40 nights, he was hungry. The tempter came to him and said, If you are the Son of God, tell these stones to become bread. Jesus answered, It is written, Men shall not live on bread alone, but on every word that comes from the mouth of God. Then the devil took him to the holy city and had him stand on the highest place of the temple. If you are the Son of God, he said, Throw yourself down, for it is written, He will command his angels concerning you, and they will lift you up in their hands so that you will not strike your foot against a stone. Jesus answered him, It is also written, Do not put the Lord your God to the test. Again, the devil took him to a very high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and their splendor. All this I will give to you, he said, if you will bow down and worship me. Jesus said to him, Away from me, Satan, for it is written, Worship the Lord your God and serve him only. Then the devil left him, and angels came and attended him. So here we see, because Jesus is our perfect example, and the Lord doesn't want us to be blindly wandering or wondering. We have the entire word of God, and when we study it in order to show ourselves approved and learn to rightly divide the word, we can see the process here prior to, because after this chapter 4, Jesus begins to preach, okay? So here he is led by the Spirit into the wilderness. Now, why would we be led? He's led by the Spirit into the place of temptation. He's not tempted by God. God doesn't tempt us. He is led into the place where he will be tempted. Why are we led into the wilderness? In order to teach us, which teaching, what comes after teaching? The test. And it's all purposeful because the Lord wants us to be able, when we're in purpose, to overcome the temptation, right? What can destroy purpose but succumbing to the enemy, succumbing to the temptations of this world, which there will be many. So testing always comes before purpose. If you're in the wilderness, my beautiful family, understand that you are on the road to purpose. You're on the path to purpose. First, Jesus was tested, and then he began to preach. Now, a side note here in Matthew 3:13 through 15, then Jesus arrived from Gath. This is a little before this, before he is brought into the wilderness. Side note for those of you, then then Jesus arrived from Galilee at the Jordan, coming to John to be baptized by him. But John tried to prevent him, saying, I have need to be baptized by you, and do you come to me? But Jesus answering him said to him, Permitted at this time, for in this way it is fitting for us to fulfill all righteousness. So, of course, beautiful John is like, you want to be baptized by me? He's like, I should be baptized by you. You know what I mean? Like, wants to fall at his feet. His reverence for the Lord, uh, his cousin, is so beautiful. So beautiful. So, what Jesus said here, for those of you who have not been baptized, Jesus says, please baptize me, for it is fitting for us to fulfill all righteousness. Let's do the math here. This isn't Kelly saying this. This is the word of God. This is your Messiah specifically said that it, being baptized fulfills all righteousness. That is a side note. First he was baptized, then he was tempted because he had he was now fit to endure temptation, okay? And then he went into purpose. Have you been baptized, full immersion baptized? No, the Catholic way of baptizing is not biblical. And we're not going to get into a conversation of, are you saying I'm not saved? If if I'm not baptized, I'm saying that baptism, according to the word of God and according to Jesus Christ, whom you claim as Lord of your life, says baptism fulfills all righteousness. Okay, so let's continue. You will be tempted with what you lack in the wilderness. This is all about examining. I want you, I say these things in the way I do so that you'll examine your circumstances. For those of you that are in the wilderness, of course, okay, and those of you that have come out and you're walking in purpose, we need to truly, you know, we want to help the brethren understand seasons that we're, we're going through. We want to encourage because sometimes, I, I know for sure, early on in my wilderness process, which endured probably much longer than the Lord wanted it to, but I was I was just not doing well in it. And 
it, if somebody had said to me, you know what, you're on the way to, 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 to purpose, you know, you're on the way into your ministry, just submit to the Lord, you know, be still. <laughs> that might have helped a bit, you know what I mean? Not not chastising anyone. I'm just saying um, I, it's tough being very blind. You know, the Lord doesn't call us to have blind faith. You know, I, I had I had more understanding or perhaps submitted more into my word before the Lord. Of course, you know, that falls on me. But that's why we also have the brethren to say to us when we're really flailing is to say, hey, Jesus was where you are. He understands and you are on the way to purpose. And this is the truth. I tell you today, the Lord is where you are. Excuse me. The Lord has, well, he is where you are by Holy Spirit, but he has been exactly where you've been for those of you in the wilderness season. And you are just being prepped in prime for purpose. Hallelujah. I like to look at it when I started to get stronger, my wilderness season, the Lord, Holy Spirit gave me a very clear um, impartation to my heart. He said, you're like on training grounds in God's hand. So no matter what you're going through, how does what is that called? Like a controlled training? Um, I couldn't say, but you're in his hand. So whatever you endure, he sees it. You're close to him. You're protected. Okay. So just remember that this, the wilderness season is a very controlled environment where the Lord is allowing you to be tested. Do not fear. So again, you will be tested with what you lack in the wilderness. Jesus was tested with food after 40 days and night of fasting. He was hungry, right? The Israelites were tested regarding their trust in the Lord after having seen him perform many miracles, right? That was the whole thing with the manna, which, you know, manna is good for a season, but eventually we want the proverbial milk and honey, right? We want to move into a place of greater trust in the Lord. We want to mature. We want to, you know, be pleasing and before the eyes of the Lord. So as your taste begins to change, and it will nearing the end of your wilderness season, you know, for the Israelites, it did not. You know, for the Israelites, uh, they didn't want to be submit to the Lord in a way that they trusted. Uh, the Lord used manna as an exercise for them, right? Don't stock it up. Don't save it. Don't get too much. Don't get too little. Do exactly what I tell you. He gave them specific instructions to live by day by day by day. And because they didn't, they ended up blindly wandering in the wilderness forever. But that's not going to be you. Beautiful, beautiful family. So let's take a look then. Examine yourself. What, what do you lack in your wilderness season? What do you seem to be lacking? Okay. What seems really stressful or tight? Where are you struggling to trust in the Lord? Because there be your test. Submit to the Lord in these areas. And do not forget the biggest part of submission, okay? Sometimes we put all that on ourselves. The biggest, hardest part about submission is the thing we always forget. Ask the Lord for strength. Ask him for perseverance. Ask him for endurance. And you will find suddenly, hey, submission isn't so hard. We have not because we ask not. You know, it's, it's, he knows we're only human. You know, that's what the word says, you know, but we truly must ask for these little things that we need because, wow, one of, I've always said one of the most powerful things on my walk on this journey with the Lord is when he changes something within my heart, like a desire or something. And then all of you know, the next day I get, all of you know, sorry, I got distracted in my mind. The next thing you know, the next day I wake up and I'm just like, Oh, I can do that. Oh, this isn't so bad. It's just crazy. You know, he just really does the, all that little tinkering in there. Hallelujah. So don't forget to ask for strength and endurance. Ask for what you need. Are you tired? You know, rest in him. Lord, help me rest in you. Lord, help me trust you. Lord, please give me strength. Lord, I want joy, Lord. Whatever it is you need, my beautiful family, make sure that you're asking the Lord. Take a look around where you're really stressed out. This is an area always that requires a deeper submission to the Lord. Ask him for what you need. So here we see Jesus' perfect exemplification of James 4, 7, which is what? That's our warfare. That's how we fight. James 4, 7, submit to God, resist the enemy, and he will flee. I love bullet points. That is spiritual warfare in a nutshell. Hallelujah. The word of God, submit to God. Resist the enemy, the enemy will flee. So, and just so you know, there's really only one step there. It's just submission to God, because in submitting to God, you are resisting the enemy, and then the enemy flees, okay? So, 
Um, we see Jesus perfect. Uh, he exemplifies James 4, 7. It's illustrated here because Satan is testing him by quoting scripture, which is God, right? Remember, the enemy will always, and the demons, will always try to bring truth with lies. That's why false prophets and false teachers, they sound like they really know what they're talking about because they're bringing truth with lies. You know, they'll use the word of God by means to sow into your flesh, to sow into um, to sow into uh, pride, you know, to sow into different means of yourself by using the word of God. Do not be deceived. We are on this walk always for the glory of God. Demon and Satan, demons and Satan, they know the name of Jesus Christ, okay? And they mix truth with lies. So here we see Satan testing Jesus by quoting scripture, which is God. The word is God and saying, prove yourself. Jesus instead says, I will not test God who again is the word. So he's saying, I'm not going to test God. Thereby, in doing so, he is submitting to God. He is resting in the Lord. I mean, imagine having Satan right next to you and ooh, talking to you. And, you know, of course, not that, you know, he doesn't suggest things to us all the time, but um, just this whole, it just gives me the creeps, this whole Satan thing with, with our Lord in, in the wilderness, you know, our Lord is just so strong. And so they're in the wilderness and he's testing him with the word. Jesus says, I will not test God. Thereby he is submitting to God. He is resisting the enemy. And then in verse 11, you see that Satan leaves him because he must. Satan doesn't Nobody can just say, go away, Satan, get out of here. No, you can't just say that. It is only by authority, by the blood of Jesus Christ, does Satan flee, okay? And that authority is gained in submission. Over and over, submission. One day at a time is all you have to do. Submission. Never let Satan write the narrative Sometimes he will tempt us or try to suggest things to you that he wants you to fall in line with his narrative. He'll say, things are really this way, you know, and if in your agreement with him, so things really are that way. It's the same thing that happened in the garden. You know, did, uh, you know he says, um, eat the fruit and Eve's like, no, God said, don't eat the fruit. And Satan's like, yeah, but did he really say that? You know what I mean? You got to really have confidence in the Lord and, you know, Sometimes we second guess ourselves when we're right. You ever do that? It's the worst, right? Sometimes you, you know the right thing and you're just like second guess yourself and you're just like, oh, I knew that. You know, generally that first instinct, especially if it's not aligning with sin, you know what I mean? It, generally it's right. Um, so here, never let Satan write the narrative. He tempts us hoping that we'll fall in line with his narrative, thereby misleading us. Yet because you are seated in high places, you must see the greater picture, picture that he only offers you death. He's just going to straight up rob you when you let him lead you astray. There is no sin that you're not able to overcome by the blood of Jesus Christ, okay? God doesn't tempt you, but Satan will, and he will lie to you and lead you astray. Trust in the Lord, submit to God, resist the enemy, and he will flee. So just wrapping this up, going forward in Matthew, Jesus goes to preach now, and he begins to for, perform miracles. This is the process, wilderness and then purpose. So let this assuage any worry, doubt, or fear that you have while in the wilderness. Boldly follow your narrow path, because as Jesus was led by the Spirit, uh, into the wilderness, so have you been. You're following the Spirit's leading. You know, sometimes, you know, submission's so powerful again because sometimes, you know, the way the world teaches warfare is like when things go rough, you're under attack. But that's not true. You know what I mean? And then we're swinging when we need to be submitting. And we can, that's what I did. You know, I was swinging when I need to be submitting. And I, I made my wilderness process much longer than it needed to be. Jesus was led by the Spirit. You're following the path when you're in the wilderness family. But don't expect perfection uh, the way we humans usually want things to be perfect in, in easy street. It's not the walk we signed up for. However, um, so you are led by the Spirit into the wilderness. You were. And he will lead you out. And in closing, this is what my whole, however was alluding to. A spectacular thing happened once Jesus passed the wilderness test, once Satan fleed. What does the scripture say? Angels, angels, <laughs> angels came 
and ministered to Jesus Christ, and so will they as well to you. I testify to this. Just like the angels when Satan was tempting him, and he's like, the word says that the angels will come and lift you up lest you dash your feet. You will feel that lifting. In fact, I made many videos about this lifted feeling as I, as I experienced it. <laughs> I tell you, I'm not quite sure they ever really put me down again. Just the new level of trust is what it is in the Lord. And he sends his angels. You know, we don't speak to angels. We don't pray to them. We don't worship him. We don't do angel numbers. But one thing for sure is that angels do exist according to the word of God. And they will absolutely guard you, protect you, and minister to you specifically after your wilderness season getting you ready for what my beautiful family purpose continue on your way to purpose the lord is with you and he will never leave you and he will never forsake you